Hello, you amazing people. Welcome back to Prescription Memes. We surpassed 500 subscribers today, and I am just so happy to have each and every one of you here with me. I am so grateful. I can hardly believe it. And today we are going to be diving into the subreddit r slash malicious compliance. If you like Reddit content like this, I would love for you to join us and click that subscribe button and the notification bell. I try to post every single day, but sometimes it's more like every day and a half. So if you hit that notification bell, you'll know exactly when. So with that being said, let's get right on into it. Lady takes my fast food order and thinks it is hers. Posted by user slash King Weasel Fart. First off, this happened a few years ago to me. I was at a fast food restaurant and my food had just been made and my order number had been called. I saw them call the number and put the food down at the same time, so I'm on my way to pick up my food with my order number that I was given on my receipt. An important thing to know is that my sandwich that I ordered had had the restaurant's spiciest sauce, which was extremely spicy sauce made from ghost peppers, which according to Google is 400 times more spicy than your normal sauce you would find sitting on a table at a restaurant. As I walk up to pick up the tray with food, an older woman who from now on we will call Karen picks up my tray with food on it. I confront her about it politely and let her know that it is actually my food as I had the receipt with the correct order number that had been called and everything on the tray matched the purchased food on the receipt. Karen completely ignores the receipt and insists that it is hers. She goes on and on about how it is really hers and that I should just let her enjoy her meal. So that's exactly what I did, fully knowing that the ghost pepper sauce was on the sandwich. I wasn't that hungry anyways. So I decided to sit down, drink my drink. I was given a cup when I placed my order for a drink, and watch Karen realize there are ghost peppers on her, my, sandwich. Next thing I know, Karen gets sent to the hospital because she is highly allergic to ghost peppers. No, just kidding, that part didn't actually happen. Karen was steaming mad and came over to me to tell me that I should have warned her about the ghost peppers. At that point, Karen was having such a fit that management asked me if Karen was bothering me. I said yes and then got my meal remade and also received a free meal for next time as a sorry that Karen was bothering you. I ate my delicious meal with ghost pepper sauce and was on my way. This is like if r slash choosing beggars had satisfying endings. Nurse finds out the hard way you should always listen to your patients. Posted by user slash Rosie Bird. So a bit of background. I have an issue with my veins. The veins in my left arm are very weak, so anytime someone tries to take blood or put a drip into the veins in that arm, they tend to pop. Not sure this is the right word, but I'm going with it. Spraying blood droplets all over. The veins in my right arm are fine. Subsequently, I always ask that blood be drawn from my right arm. The story. Around 2002, I applied for a life cover policy. One of the requirements of the policy was for me to undergo a full physical. I was sent to a doctor of their choosing, not my GP unfortunately, for this. After it was done, I was told by the nurse they needed to take some bloods as well. I was taken into a small side room, sat down, and the nurse immediately starts prepping my left arm. I politely ask her to please take bloods from my right arm as the veins on my left have a tendency to burst or pop when you put a needle in them. She scoffs and says something like, Oh, it's because the person who did it before didn't know what they were doing. I explain that it is not a once-off thing and has happened many times before. She says I need to relax. She continues prepping my left arm and again I try to ask her to swap arms. She says, Well, I've started prepping this arm. There's no need to worry. I assure you it won't happen again. I know what I'm doing. I try to say something and she cuts me off and says, Look, let's just get this done, okay? I give up. Fine, let her find out the hard way. Okay, I say, go ahead. She gets my arm all ready, inserts the needle, and my vein bursts, spraying her nice clean white blouse with blood droplets. She stands there, shocked, staring at her now blood-spattered top. I smile and say, I told you that would happen. She didn't say a word, just got another needle and took blood from my right arm. How much is your time really worth? Posted by user slash deadly gerbil. I used to work for a cell phone company back in the bad old days before iPhones and Android when Blackberry ruled the land and you had limited minutes and texts. At the time, customers with Palm or Blackberry devices got unlimited data for $30 per month on top of whatever calling and texting plan they had. 
One day, there was a massive DOS attack on BlackBerry's servers, and since BlackBerry's OS was set up to run everything through their servers, that meant that all BB users had no data service for about two hours. I get a call from a customer with a thick, hybrid New York, New Jersey accent. She's calling to complain about the outage, which was now fixed. She claimed that she'd lost thousands of dollars because she couldn't use her BlackBerry Messenger or her email. Now, this is such a common claim that it quickly becomes like background noise to anyone working at a cell company. If you can really lose hundreds or even thousands of dollars from an outage, you can afford multiple phones on every carrier in case one or more goes down. Therefore, anyone claiming an outage cost them tons of money is either a liar or an idiot. Either way, it was a surefire way to get zero sympathy from a tech support rep. I explained that the outage was due to a hacking attack on BlackBerry and verified that, yes, her calls and texts, the only things that didn't go through BB, had worked perfectly all day. I tried to explain how BlackBerry handled all data from its devices and why. Security. But she was having none of it and demanded compensation for her lost time. Me is me. EW is entitled woman. EW. I lost a lot of money because of your outage. I want a credit. Me. Oh, well, it is our policy to provide a credit for EW. Good, then do it. Me. Well, I need to go over EW. I don't care. Just give me the credit. Me. But EW. Do it. Me. Okay. Okay, a credit of nine cents has been applied to your next bill. Is there anything else I can help you with? EW. What? Nine cents? Me. Yes, ma'am. EW. Why only nine cents? Me. Well, as I tried to explain, I can provide a credit for the amount of time the service was out. You pay $30 per month for unlimited data, even though this month has 31 days. I rounded it off to 30 so $1 per day. Since the service was out for two hours, that's 1 12th of a day, and 1 12th of $1 is 8.3 repeating cents, which I rounded up to $9 for you. EW, seething. That is ridiculous. I need more than that. Me. Ah, well, as I tried to tell you before, once I've applied a credit for the downtime, I can't provide any others without a manager's approval. EW. Then get me a manager. Me. Of course, ma'am. I do need to let you know that if you speak to a manager, any deals or credits I've offered can be rescinded by the manager. EW. Whatever. Get one. Five minutes of hold time later, I get one of our escalations managers on the line and explain the situation. After a long pause during which I hear typing, the EM speaks. EM. I can offer her eight cents. Me. Grinning. I already gave her nine because I rounded up. EM. Well, now she's only getting eight. Put her on the line. I've never loved a coworker as much as I loved that EM in that moment. And I've dated coworkers. <laughs> Have any of you ever worked in customer service? In, for a phone company or in a call center, I have, and I've dealt with some ridiculous people. I have some stories. If you want to hear them, let me know. <laughs> Reimburse me or the police will get involved. Okay, then let's get the police involved. Posted by user slash Charles Oberon. So I work in customer support for a mobile network provider. The way our company works is that after training, you enter a one month testing period where you answer phone calls under close supervision. At the end of the testing period, they either let you go or transfer you to a permanent position on one of the teams. I was a few days away from the end of the testing period when I get one heck of a phone call. I spent more than an hour on that one and it hurt my final score at the end of the month. The customer told a tall tale about how when she was trying to pay her debt to the company, she racked hundreds of shekels worth of debt in unincluded uses. The sales representative was rude to her and refused to let her pay, so she took a picture of him and left. The reason the call took so long is because she kept telling the story out of order, adding and changing details and going on tangents and rants. 
It was very difficult to get the story straight. I felt like a detective trying to piece together the clues into what actually happened. Every time I read the story back to her, chronologically, she added or changed something in the middle or went on a tangent about how she's a polite British woman and we shouldn't hire people like that representative to represent our company. Eventually, I got her to settle down on a version of what happened. I looked through the records and saw that according to the representative, who was a lot more concise than her, she was the one being rude, yelling at him in English, a language he barely spoke, and taking his picture without his consent. I didn't tell her that. I just politely instructed her on how to pay her debt via the phone. She sounded nervous. I told her that until the debt is paid, I cannot make the changes in the account, including adding a report. So reluctantly, she gave me her credit card details and the debt was paid in full. I reported on what she told me and moved it along to my superiors. A few days later, my testing period was over and despite that tragedy of a call, I aced it and got transferred to the illustrious email department, which is what I wanted. It's much more chill here and I can work at my own pace, not having to rely on the customer or the supervisor to work faster. Also, I could take my breaks whenever I felt like it. Everything is fine for a couple of weeks until I receive a new email telling a familiar tale. It was an enraged recounting of the same story I had heard on the phone, except much more elaborate with more details I had never heard before, such as the involvement of another person or that the representative assaulted the customer by trying to impede her exit from the store. The customer complained that she's been cheated and expected the representative to be fired, but she saw him again at the store and was outraged. She was under the impression that her paying her debt meant we will listen to her and fire the representative. The email ends with the following demands. Fire the representative. Reimburse her for the money we stole from her under false pretenses. Apologize to her in the form of extra compensation and personal phone call from a high-ranking manager. If we did not comply, the police will get involved. So I complied with the second part and we got the police involved. <laughs> You see, while reading the email, I noticed that the address she emailed us from had a different surname than her account or the credit card information she provided. And lo and behold, the email was actually her real name, while the other details were fake. Turns out, she was indeed a polite British woman, a British woman overstaying her visa for over a year that was now using a fake identity in Israel. How's that for false pretenses, witch? As we discovered later, she was also wanted for numerous accounts of fraud where she didn't pay for services or claimed compensation for stories that later turned out to be false, just like she tried to do with us. We called the police, but they couldn't find her since the physical address she registered on our site was also fake. So we called her back to the store to apologize personally. She gladly obliged. The police were waiting for her. Neither I nor the representative she implicated were there that day, unfortunately, so we didn't get to see the look on her face. She was fined a hefty amount and then deported back to the UK. Alright everybody, that's it for today's video. I hoped you liked it. This is the first time that we've done r slash malicious compliance and I really liked it. What do you think? And if you would like to and haven't, I'd love for you to subscribe and join us tomorrow for our next video. Have a good day. Bye.